Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. We are at some hospital out in the middle of nowhere uh, as my sister gets deeper and deeper into the American medical system and so while I'm sitting here wanting to uh, get outside on this beautiful day <clears throat> let's see what have we got today we're going to skip over medium.com for uh, the good old mainstream media thank you Yahoo News and this outfit what I've mentioned many times called the conversation so I've been waiting for this um, article about, you, you know, this <clears throat> all this talk of the super El Nino heading our way. And I'm hoping uh, this is going to come through. I'm not connected to the Internet. So we're going to hear from someone who hopefully knows what they're talking about. This is a fellow named Dylan Amaya, <clears throat> who is a climate research scientist at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, otherwise known as NOAA. So this is what uh, climate scientist Dylan Amaya wants to have a conversation about here on this gorgeous spring day. That would be Wednesday, April 19th, 2023. What is the El Nino forecast? <clears throat> El Nino is coming and ocean temperatures are already at record highs. That can spell disaster for fish and corals. Take it away, Dylan. It's coming. Winds are weakening along the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Heat is building beneath the ocean surface. By July, so two and a half months from now, by July, most forecast models agree, and he has links to all of this stuff. Most of the, you know, the um, climate forecast models agree that the climate system's biggest players, El Nino, will return for the first time in nearly four years. El Nino is one side of the climatic coin called the El Nino Southern Oscillation, otherwise known as ENSO. It is the heads to La Nina's tails. All right. During El Nino, a swath of ocean stretching 6,000 miles westward off the coast of Ecuador warms for months on end, typically by 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit or 1 to 2 degrees Celsius. A few degrees may not seem like much, but in that part of the world, it is more than enough to completely reorganize wind, rainfall, and temperature patterns all over the planet. I am a climate scientist who studies the oceans. After three years of La Nina, it is time to start preparing for what El Nino may have in store. So, so far, he has not used the alarmist term Super El Nino. We will see whether or not he brings this up. <clears throat> so, how does El Nino affect the planet? No two El Nino events are exactly alike, though we have seen enough of them that forecasters have a pretty good idea of what is likely to happen. People tend to focus on El Nino's impact on land justifiably. The warm water affects air currents that leave areas wetter or drier than usual. 
it can ramp up storms in some areas like the southern U.S. while tending to tamp down Atlantic hurricane activity. So that's already a misunderstanding I'm hearing in the Dumasphere. Uh, so according to this fellow, and I'm not really sure, I guess because most of the action is over in the Pacific, that uh, he is claiming uh, it might actually help with the uh, super hurricanes. Uh, El Nino can wreak havoc on the many marine ecosystems that support the world's fishing industries, including coral reefs and seagrass meadows. Specifically, El Nino tends to trigger intense and widespread periods of extreme ocean warming known as marine heat waves. Global ocean temperatures are already at record highs, so El Nino-induced marine heat waves could push many sensitive fisheries to a breaking point. A marine heat wave is just that, a wave of extreme heat in the ocean, not dissimilar to an atmospheric heat wave on land. At their smallest, at their smallest marine heat waves can inundate local bays and coves with hotter than normal water for a few days or weeks. At their largest, marine heat waves like the Northeast Pacific Warm Blob of 2013 and 2014 can grow to gargantuan proportions with regions three times the size of Texas experiencing ocean temperatures 4 to 6 Fahrenheit, about 2 to 3 C, above average for months or even years. Warm water might not seem like a big deal to book hermit, especially to surfers hoping to leave their wetsuits at home. But for many marine organisms that are highly adapted to specific water temperatures, marine heat waves can make living in the ocean feel like running a marathon. For example, some fish increase their metabolism in warm waters by so much that they burn energy faster than they can eat and they can die. Pacific cod declined by 70% in the Gulf of Alaska in response to one marine heat wave. Other impacts include bleached corals, widespread harmful algae blooms, decimated seaweeds, and increased marine mammal strandings, all told billions of U.S. dollars are lost to marine heat waves each year. Marine heat waves flare up for a variety of reasons. Sometimes ocean currents shift warm water around. Sometimes surface winds are weaker than normal, leading to less evaporation over the ocean and warm waters. Sometimes cloudy places just are not as cloudy for a few months, which lets more sunlight in and heats up the ocean even more. Sometimes both weaker winds and fewer clouds happen at the same time, producing record-breaking marine heat waves. So where does El Nino fit in all this? In the climate system, El Nino is king. When it dons its fiery crown, the entire planet takes notice, and the oceans are no exception, but the likelihood of increased marine heat wave activity during El Nino depends on where you are. 
along the U.S. west coast during El Nino, surface winds that normally blow from the north tend to subside. This weakens evaporation and slows upwelling of colder, deeper water. That increases the chance of coastal marine heat waves. Peruvian fishermen have for centuries weathered periods of extreme ocean warming that drive fish away. Uh, it wasn't until the 1920s that scientists realized that the South American marine heat rays were related to El Nino. In the Bay of Bengal, east of India, interactions between El Nino and a tropical airflow pattern known as the Walker circulation elevate the risk for marine heat waves. Even if marine heat waves are not more obvious at the ocean surface this year, it does not mean all is well down below. In a recent study, my colleagues and I showed that marine heat waves also unfold along the seafloor of coastal regions. In fact, these bottom marine heat waves are sometimes more intense than their surface counterparts. They can also persist much larger. Events like this can be related to El Nino and put a lot of stress on bottom-dwelling species. Bering Sea snow crab landings were down 84% in 2018 after a marine heat wave reached the seafloor. So the forecast is we are in for hot water with El Nino on the horizon now, what can we expect for this year? The good news is seasonal forecast models can skillfully predict marine heat waves three to six months in advance depending on the region and forecasts tend to be most accurate during El Nino's years. So the latest forecast predicts several active marine heat waves to persist into June through August, including in the North Pacific, off the coast of Peru, southeast of New Zealand, and in the tropical North Atlantic. The same forecast predict El Nino to ramp up over the next six to nine months, increasing marine heat wave risk in January through March of 2024 for the U.S. West Coast, the Western Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal, and the tropical North Atlantic, that said, these predictions are far enough out that things could change. Time will tell whether they hold hot water but we would do well to prepare. El Nino is coming. There you go. If you enjoyed that story, I guess a couple of more stories by this fellow. Watching a coral reef die as climate change devastates one of the most pristine tropical island areas on Earth, and 2022's supercharged summer of climate extremes, how global warming in La Nina fueled disasters on top of disasters. Anyway, I need to wrap this up because I have to go deal with the American medical system. My guys.